Hi guys, Jeremy here from School of Wok Covent Garden. It's Wok Wednesdays once again and we're ready to wok with some General Tso's chicken. Peel and slice your ginger and garlic. That's an easy way to peel your ginger. Use something blunt like a teaspoon. Spring onion. Garnish. You would never waste your spring onion if you want to use it for the cooking. It will add flavour. The white part's great for that. And add that to your ginger and garlic. Next up, you're going to marinate your chicken. Got some diced chicken here. Chicken thigh rather than breast. A lot more flavour to it. Some light soy sauce, sesame oil, and a pinch of sugar. Classic Cantonese style marinade. Light soy sauce. Splash of sesame oil. And a pinch of sugar. Give that a good massage through. I'm gonna crack an egg into this. And that's just to help bind the corn flour around the chicken to get a nice crispy finish. You're going to season up the corn flour, some salt and pepper. Don't need too much. And then we're going to use excessive amounts of corn flour to make this sort of dry, dusty white batter consistency. And see how much corn flour I'm using here. I want every piece of chicken to come out separate and dry, dusty white in texture. This is where people get a little confused. Why do we use so much corn flour? It's to separate and make it foolproof. Look at that. That is guaranteed to come out nice and crispy. So that's ready to fry off. All I've got to do now is make up my sauce. A teaspoon of sriracha for base kick. Half a tablespoon of Qingqiang black vinegar. It's black vinegar made from the black rice husk. A tablespoon of sweet chili sauce. A tablespoon of oyster sauce. A savoury flavour. There's a rough tablespoon for you. Balance out that sweetness with some saltiness. Your light soy sauce. A couple of spoons of sugar. This is kind of like a sweet and sour in many ways. And a dash of dark soy sauce. And that's just to caramelise you can see the depth of colour in that from the dark soy sauce. Like a dark maroon. I'm going to top that up with some chicken stock in the wok. I'm going to cook this through before using the sauce. The reason for that is I want to get the chicken stock into the sauce itself. And get it to a wrapping texture. I'm going to cook the sauce through first. Get it to a nice bubbling consistency and then start to pour the chicken stock in. And that initial caramelization will help to finish it nicely. Now this is not a classic way of cooking a wok fried sauce. It just sort of lightens up the texture of the sauce. You just want to reduce this down by at least half. 
I'm going to check it for texture. I want it to get to an almost sort of syrupy stage before I take it out. And then I'll use it again when I'm finishing off the dish. You can see that sort of syrupy texture now. That's the point to re remove it ready for later. So onto the deep frying. You want to test the oil, see whether it's hot enough. Anything wooden, a pair of wooden chopsticks, if it fizzes, that oil is at the right temperature. It's about 180 degrees C. So I'm just gonna to dust any excess corn flour off the meat. First, and just go bit by bit. Don't go too much in at one go. Straight into the oil, and then just push through that. You want enough space in your wok to fry it through nicely to keep the heat and that immediate seal. And that's what makes a good deep fry. So I'll probably cook this chicken in two batches. You can see the crispiness already on the edge of that chicken. Now if you want to go super crispy, you can double fry your meat. So have an initial fry, take it out, do the next batch, and then fry it again. I'll show you that. So your second fry, if you want that sort of super crispy finish. You see I've got plenty of space in my wok. So when you're frying this amount of food, most importantly, don't fill your wok more than halfway up the side. With oil, you just make sure that you're deep frying safely and see how crispy that's coming out now. Only needs a couple of minutes in between the two frying processes. Once you start getting fewer bubbles, and you know that it's getting a little drier inside the chicken, so the chicken's definitely cooked. They're also floating at the top of the oil. Look at that. Crispy chicken, ready for my general so sauce. All we gotta do is finish that off in the wok. So to finish off your general so chicken, you wanna start with your base spices. I've got ginger, garlic, spring onion. I've also got some dry whole red chilies that have been soaked in hot water, just for about half hour or so. Make sure your oil is nice and hot. Have your chicken, your fried chicken ready, and your sauce just to wrap around. Oil's got to be smoking hot. Start to sear your ginger and garlic, and that extra bit of spring onion, just for added flavor. I want to cook out the rawness of that ginger. It smells delicious already. So next up, your chilies and your sauce. Your chilies in. High heat. Your sauce will bring the flavor of those chilies and the ginger and the garlic off the bottom of the wok. You can see how vigorously that's boiling away. It's an immediate caramelization of the sauce. And that's what make this, makes this dish right. Once you can see that the texture of the sauce is getting quite sticky, your chicken can go in and then just toss that wok through. Don't cook it anymore. Just wrap that sauce around the chicken and it's done. All we're gonna do now is garnish that with some sesame seeds and then serve up. Whoa, I'm hungry. Crispy General So's chicken. 
sesame seeds just bring out the colour of the sauce. There you have it, General Tso's chicken. Time for the tasting. Oh, it's so good, I want another piece. That spice, savoury from the oyster sauce, the kick of ginger and chilli, bang on. Love it. We've had some great suggestions from some of you guys. If you want more suggestions on what you, what, We've had some great suggestions from you guys. Keep them coming and don't forget to like, like, like and subscribe.